A couple of weeks ago, we did a very short trailer towing video, but the conditions were not that good. It was really short. It was only about 18 miles. It was only on two lane highways. There was some construction and the baseline was the opposite direction of the trailer tow. So any uh, wind or elevation differential uh, would have affected the outcome. So today we're going to do a much more thorough trailer tow video. It's going to be about 50 miles. It'll be a mix of highways, uh, interstates, and two lane roads. There'll be some 70 mile an hour, some 55 mile an hour, probably some 35 mile an hours. And we're going to do it, we're going to do a baseline without the trailer from the exact same route we're going to take pulling the trailer. So we're going to head up there, get a baseline coming back, then we'll go up again, grab the trailer, and come back a second time. Welcome back to eHermes, your electric adventure travel channel. Please remember to subscribe, hit the like button, and hit that bell button to be notified of our upcoming content. We are at the starting point with no load. We're going to reset the trip two to zeros. Okay, we have 51% range, says 155 miles. We're going to drive the same route on the same day so the weather should be similar. The wind may change a little bit over time. I can't help that. But the train and the route will be the same. We'll go to Hiram. We'll pick John up, come back up here, and then hook the trailer up and start all over again. So this is starting at zero with the baseline route with no load. We said we'd get on some uh, divided highway type roads and here we are, hands free, 70 miles an hour. That's the speed limit. We're just gonna go to the speed limit, whatever it is, the truck automatically adjusts to it. So when we get off, we'll be back down to 55. We've gone through some 45 mile an hour zones, but right now we are going 70 miles an hour. We'll be doing the same thing, pulling the trailer. And there's certainly plenty of 45 mile an hour speed limits as well on this route. It's a pretty good mix between 45, 55, and 70. We have arrived. It was 48 miles on the button and we averaged just 2.4 is 2.3 and we came down a hill right before i turned in the driveway made it up to 2.4 we have 104 miles of range i believe we started with 51 percent we're down to 35 percent so we took 16 percent to get here all right so once again we have the 1994. 1994 rockwood tent camper hooked up we're going to tow it the same 48 miles we towed well, we drove without anything behind the truck. The same speed, the same route, the same hills, pretty much the same wind. We had uh, 2.4 miles per kilowatt, 2.3. When I came down the hill, it just clicked over to 2.4. So I would expect this to be 2.1 to 2.2, but we will have to see. All right, here we are back at the starting point. We are going to reset trip two. We're gonna use the same speeds. Same route, same everything. Let's see what we come up with. So you can't even really see the trailer back there. It's actually lower than the top of the bed. So we're not getting a lot of wind resistance, that's for sure. Just like when we were empty, we're going 70 miles an hour on the highway, trying to duplicate the conditions. If you'll notice, just to make things interesting, we barely have enough battery to get home. So this is kind of a do or die, making sure my assumptions are correct. Yes, it's yelling at me. We have 61 miles of range. We have about 35 miles to go. We should be fine. So we are back. Used 2.1 miles per kilowatt hour. To recap then, I believe this was a much more scientific, well-planned trip than our initial trailer towing trip because we used the same route on the same day the same weather conditions, the same speeds, and it was a mix of interstate highways, two lane roads, and small town driving. The only addition was the 1,000 pound pop-up camper and 200 pound passenger who was not with me on my baseline trip. We went from 2.4 miles per kilowatt hour down to 2.1 miles per kilowatt hour, a reduction of 12.5%. Due to the low profile of the pop-up camper, the fact that it has minimal additional wind resistance, 
The only real difference is the weight you're pulling and the added passenger. I believe this shows that one could easily pull a pop-up camper behind this vehicle, particularly if you have the extended range battery. Had we been more interstate driving and less rural towns and rural back road driving, Certainly, I think both numbers would have been lower. I suspect that the unloaded load would have been around 2.1 to 2.2, and with the load, it probably would have been 1.6 to 1.7, and maybe the difference would have been 15%. In the future, we hope to tow with different trailers, uh, some with a higher profile and a slightly heavier, and we'll give you the results of those tests when we do them. So that concludes this video. If you liked it, please hit that like button. Please subscribe and remember to hit that bell button so you'll be notified of our upcoming content. Thank you.